lovely and darling viewers, it's Jen here at Check Her Joy. This time I'm reviewing Harrow County. This is a uh, comic book series from Dark Horse Comics. It was published from 2015 to 2018. Writing and art is by Colin Bunn and Tyler Crook. Um, I'm going to stick with volumes 1 and 2, which cover four issues each. There are a total of eight volumes. I've actually went through and read them all, but to avoid spoilers, I'm just going to stick mainly with the first one and a little bit into volume 2. So this is a horror series. Um, lots of creepy demons and stuff from your nightmares running around. It's definitely a more adult comic book series. And we're dealing with a character who is 18 and just becoming an adult. It takes place in the 1930s in this very rural setting. And all of it takes place in Harrow County, which is basically plagued by demons, or what they call haints. Hence the title of Volume 1, Countless Haints. The story follows Emmy as she turns 18 and starts... Finding out that she has these strange powers, kind of magical powers, and that the haints really respond to her, and she has some pull in this world. She's pretty powerful. But also the townspeople are scared of any kind of magic, especially because they were plagued by a witch in the past. So there was this girl, Hester, before Emmy was born, who started off healing people, being very helpful, but also there are the demons, and they were also drawn to Hester, and Hester definitely used them to her advantage, and she also started gaining followers within the town, and so that creeped out the rest of the town, and eventually it leads to the town um, hanging Hester, which is actually where the story starts. Um, so this is all before Emmy's even born, but all of this fear is stuck in the townspeople's like minds and so they are very very cautious of Emmy. Emmy's day-to-day -day life she lives on this farm with her father. One of the very first supernatural things that are happening is that the livestock are giving birth to deformed babies and they aren't surviving. And Emmy finds out that she can actually fix this and heal it and that's when we first start seeing that she has powers and we're we're following the journey as Emmy is starting to figure out what her powers are. So it's a coming of age story, but it's more of like on this very big, very cosmic scale, just because of her powers and the things that are drawn to her. So Emmy as a character is very likable, at least for me. She tries to do good. She's trying to do right, but also she's finding that things aren't as they seem. Maybe she's been lied to her life, her whole life, and just trying to sort everything out. But I love, like, her outlook on life and trying to, like, help. She tries to help. She's trying to help these animals. She's trying to help the townspeople. But she also is trying to help the demons, which I I loved about her character. Um, like, everything about Emmy was awesome. I also love this mystery, and you really feel her emotional struggle. Um, we also have her pa, who is just the simple farmer. He's just trying to do the best he can. He's raising a daughter. Who, I mean, it's kind of, what do you do with a kid who might have magical powers? Um, and when they start manifesting and the town starts turning on everyone, it's a pretty awkward position to be in. Um, but I love his, like, very straightforward, very rural. Um, he's got this very um, practical knowledge of life and how things work in his worldview, and I love it. And we also have Bernice, who is another girl in town about Emmy's age, and the two of them are friends. Um, and, like... Emmy's father keeps pretty much to himself, so the only people who come to the farm are, like, uh, Bernice's grandfather who comes with deliveries and stuff. So Emmy and Bernice spend a lot of time talking when these deliveries are happening. They're also about the same age, so they have a pretty similar worldview, and they've been going through experiences about the same time. So I love, I love Bernice. She kind of knows more about the world than Emmy does. She's been out there more. She's, she lives in a different town. She goes on these deliveries with her grandfather where she sees more of the county. Um, and she's just a fun character. She's nice and hopeful. Um, so I love the introduction of Bernice. She is definitely, she's got an interesting story arc too. The darker things in town are drawn to Emmy also. So one of my favorite characters is the skinless boy. So his skin and his body have been separated and they are running around, uh, separately. So the skin has the ear, so the skin has like the mouth and it can talk to Emmy, 
but like his body is out there running around just like all muscle and everything and it can go have autonomy and it's a really cool character and the way that he functions and his like two different halves um and he does kind of become a friend to emmy so we have haints like the skinless boy but then there were other haints like these burning skeletons which fall into like a completely different character like the skinless boy you get the feeling that he could have been human at one point and has humanity to him but then there are these demons and haints that are completely their own thing don't have humanity um but are just so cool as like monsters i love monsters guys so like i love seeing the rest of her county and how they all fit in there's the skinless boy running around without his skin um lots of action and like fighting and there's lots of suspense as I'm discovering the world and trying to figure out what's friend and what's foe. And there's so much rich storytelling and where each of these hates came from and how the their past plays out. Um, it's a pretty rich world and I love the dark color palette, um, the watercolor. It's so much fun and some of these are just so creepy. Volume 1 is basically Emmy trying to figure out her past and where she fits in. There is this connection between her and Hester. There's a reason why they both have these powers. And I love getting, that's like kind of the main mystery of the entire series, is how does Hester play into with all of this and what happened in the past. Volume 2, we start getting into more story arcs where we have like specific people and demons and problems that we need to solve um, that carries on through the rest of the series. Um, volume 2, we have another girl called Cammie showing up who is basically Emmy's twin sister, and Cammy has a distinctly different worldview than Emmy, whereas Emmy wants to protect and use her powers for good. Cammy has all these powers, and she just, she doesn't see why she should have to hold back because of other people, and she's pretty sinister. So we have Cammy and Emmy meeting and trying to figure out where they fit with each other, and where they each fit into the world, and Cammy, like, wants... Because Cammy has, like, the same powers as Emmy, like, they can both do different things, but they have different worldviews and trying to see how they mesh and, like, combine with each other. But there are also these two girls who are looking for meaning and trying to find, find each other also. But also Cammy is a pretty sinister character just because she leans towards the darker side of things. So when Cammy shows up, there's definitely a suspenseful uh, reckoning happening. <laughs> Things start changing as she starts bringing out some of the darker things and encouraging them. Um, and Emmy trying to find this line between protecting the people and protecting the Hanes and trying to make them live harmoniously. I think that's Emmy's main thing is that she wants harmony. She doesn't see the Hanes as particularly evil. She sees them as more beings that also deserve a place in the world and trying to sort it out. But also the Hanes don't like the humans, there's too much bad blood, the humans are obviously afraid of the Hanes, these are this, literally the stuff of nightmares, and that is pretty much the theme that carries on throughout the entire series. So this is a pretty dark horror series, uh, it has tons of monsters, which I love, there's this emotional aspect of figuring out Cammy and Emmy, and the world, and growing up, and I just, I loved it, I loved the visuals of this like watercolor painting a lot of it's very dark very eerie um lots of sinister imagery happening snakes reappear as a common theme so i just ate all of this up i loved it there's a few series a few books towards the middle where we start introducing tons and tons of characters and there's just too many characters at once and so my interest kind of lagged but the end of the entire series all eight volumes that one definitely picked up again i loved volume eight also so volumes one and two i think i gave these both five stars i know i gave volume one five stars if you love darker creepier monsters and you love psychology of like figuring out what's good and evil and sometimes things that appear evil aren't necessarily evil like it's all fun and things that are good don't always end up being good either peace out i love you and keep reading